The darker the shadow, the closer the light. The darker the shadow, the closer the light. Speak of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And welcome home, class of 1992. I will add my voice to your welcome. From Seminary of the Southwest, I was peaking in high school. I was insufferable. I was living my wonder years. And as many of us were unable to see this path that lay ahead of us, we are grateful that you kept the candles lit for those of us to follow after you. So thank you. I want to introduce uh, Roland Frederick Stewart to some of you, although no introduction is needed uh, for those of a certain vintage. Roland was a ubiquitous presence in the 1980s, appearing in a rainbow clown wig and bearing a sign that read John 316 in bold letters. Roland Stewart was a born again Christian who desired to evangelize. So by strategically placing himself in front of broadcast cameras at pro sporting events, Roland was, as they said in the 80s, on a mission from God to get the word out. So whether at Major League Baseball games, behind NFL goalposts, in golf tournaments, he was called the Rainbow Man. And John 316 became a fixture on national TV. Emboldened as broadcasters tried to avoid capturing him on camera, Stewart and his verse seemed to become even more visible. It was like not. It was like he was everywhere at once. He even landed his own Bud Light endorsement. In our reading from Acts today, Peter and the apostles are emboldened as well. Emboldened by the gift of the Holy Spirit, and they too are on a mission from God to get the word out. Performing many signs and wonders, they're making themselves highly visible in Solomon's portico, drawing the esteem of the crowds and the jealousy of the authorities. Indeed, they are so popular, folks even carried out their sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats in order that Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. This shadow of Peter's has become holy. This shadow that is thrown from Peter has the power to heal. This shadow somehow transmits the power of God and yet is an absence of the light. Shadow is light negated by figure. And by virtue of its contrast, when it falls upon a figure, when it falls upon you or upon me or us, it makes the light brighter. This negation of light is unique in its contrast to the story of Nicodemus and Jesus that Hope just read, that we continue from our gospel reading, that the Pharisee comes to know the Christ in the beautiful darkness. Now much has been written on and preached about and frankly lamented over regarding this figure so prominently in the Gospel of John, and in this scene. Themes of goodness and evil, belief and unbelief, life and death, light and darkness, appear to leave no middle ground for those who receive the words of Jesus at face value. And ironically, face value is precisely what Jesus seems to be steering Nicodemus away from. For God 
so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who do not believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed, but those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Taken at face value, these words are explicit. Salvation that is exclusive, conditional, and dependent on your reason. However, the mysterious good news that is proclaimed to us is about God's grace, not about God's demands. Our words of scripture proclaim a mysterious paradox of our Savior whose glory is depicted in iconography as we see in the back and a mandorla, a beautiful blackness, beautiful blackness of mystery and unknowing that we must pass through to reach the Christ that seems to be lit both from behind and within, whose very face seems to shine with a light that has no source but its own. To contemplate this image and then define its comprehension for others is to limit the reach of love. To hear these words in John as unattainable for anyone but those who believe in Jesus is to cheapen the grace of God. It is a denial of the light by which we see God's grace poured out on all flesh. It is to deny the figure of the cross in whose shadow we are redeemed, transformed, and healed. Those of you who believe that God so loves this world, all of this, all of this, you clearly see. And you who see are called by your angels or your commission on ministry to go <laughs> stand in the temple and tell the people the whole message about this life. Your message is holy. It's a message that heals. It is a message that has let loose the power of God in my life. As the scheduling sacristan here in Christ Chapel, I was responsible for the senior sermon preaching rota this spring. And after much prayer and fasting and spiritual preparation, I entered the seniors' names into randomizer.org. <laughs> and then I gave thanks to God for the clear direction that he provided regarding who was going to preach on <laughs> what day. Friends, I'm grateful that today is my day to stand Amen. in this portico, Amen. in this chapel. I'm grateful that like the rainbow man, today is my day to get the word out. <laughs> These last three years have truly been the wonder years. <laughs> These years I'm grateful to have been seen by you to have been so loved by you and for a brief time to have stood in your shadow as you passed me by. Thanks be to God.